right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Hangout, to the little variety hour, which is never an hour. Uh, we just kind of let it go. And they usually do, like this one will, no doubt. Um, this is going to be a great one. Tonight, we're talking about uh, interesting photographers that we found on Google+. Plus. Um, this is just a small sampling. I think most of us spend an inordinate amount of time on Google+, Plus, getting inspired by all the, the people that we found. Uh, but I want to take an opportunity to uh, kind of, you know, share the love a little bit and show off some other photographers that maybe uh, maybe you haven't heard about yet. And maybe you might like to follow, too, and circle up. Uh, then they'll inspire you as much as they've probably inspired a lot of us. Um, and also, I want to welcome uh, the whole uh, Twit audience, which is uh, watching now. I appreciate you guys very much, too. Uh, I'm in the chat room, so is everybody else. Uh, if you're watching on Google+, Plus, I think we've all kind of shared into our streams, but you can join the live chat room over on uh, Twit, and we can uh, answer questions. We'll do Q&A at the end, just like always. So uh, we welcome you in there, sort of a fun, fun time to join the live chat. All right, so uh, here's kind of the order of operations tonight. Uh, Hangouts are always really quite freeform, and I'm just sort of a, a ringleader of sorts, I guess. I, I, uh, I like them to go whichever direction they happen to go. But we do have sort of an order of things. We'll, we'll say hello to everybody. People can introduce themselves and uh, plug whatever the heck they want to plug. Um, and, and then we will go through and show off different photographers that we found in Google+. Plus. We'll share a small number of their photos so you guys can see it. Um, uh, and then, uh, after we kind of go around the horn, uh, we'll all share some of our own uh, photos that are new. Uh, maybe the world hasn't seen yet because I know everyone wants to see the latest from Thomas or see what uh, Kelly might pull out of her purse or what have you. Um, <laughs> and, and then... Uh, and then we'll do Q&A. Um, all right. Okay, so that's kind of how we'll go. Well, let's start with uh, my friend in New Zealand. Uh, this is Gordon from CameraLabs.com. Hello, Gordon. Hi, Trey. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me on. I, I run a site called CameraLabs.com where I review cameras, lenses, and accessories. So if you're looking for a new camera and you're wondering how it performs next to other ones, check it out. Um, Trey said I was allowed to show you the latest thing that I've done at Camera Labs. It's actually not a review, but we've just published our first ebook. This is uh, what it looks like on the iPad. It's a book about wildlife photography. So if you're into wildlife photography, you want some great tips, uh, check it out. It's at CameraLabs.com. Thanks again for having me. All right, very cool. Uh, ebooks are the future. I'm with you, brother. Um, all right, let's say hello to uh, Chi Chu from Google. Hi, Chi. Hi guys, uh, thanks for having me on here. Um, I, I mentioned to a few of my friends earlier, but I, I feel a little bit daunted here because I think I'm the, the primary non-professional photographer in the group. Uh, I'm completely amateur, I just kind of shoot for fun. Um, but I love photography. Uh, and uh, you guys, by doing this hangout here, are implicitly plugging what I want to plug, so I don't have to push it any further than that. So I work for Google and I manage the engineering team that builds hangouts. All right, great. Well, uh, I've been enjoying seeing your photos come across, and uh, I guess we'll get to see some of your work tonight, too, as well as some of the people you've um, figured out that you might like to show off. So thank you, Chi. Um, let's say hello. Kind of going randomly. Let's say hi to Kelly. Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I'm Kelly. I am a stay-at-home mom that has gotten hooked on photography, and so I'm trying to, you know, get my claws into everything and never put my camera down and all that good stuff. I am one of the co-curators of Macro Monday. Yay, Macro Monday! Um, <clears throat> wow, that sounded like, it was like part of the people. That's probably not cool. But um, <clears throat> Macro Monday, awesome. I'm also one of the co-hosts of Life Through the Lens. We uh, That's a bi-weekly show, and we have a show coming up. But I will let Karen plug that show because she's also one of the co-hosts of that show. That's it. If you want to see any of my images, you can find them on Google+. Plus. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Look who just jumped in. It's uh, Sergey Brin. Hey, Sergey, how are you? Hi, Trey. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, I have sure. to confess I'm not going to be able to stay too terribly long, but uh, very excited to be uh, with all of these distinguished photographers. 
Oh, well, thanks for uh, coming. We appreciate you and uh, everything you built very much. We'll talk about photography tonight and not too much about uh, Google, although you're welcome to plug this thing you've built by chance. Uh, well, I, I'm going to focus on my photos, though I should say hi to Chi. Nice to see you, Chi. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Cool. Uh, well, we're just going around with introductions right now. Um, let's say hi to uh, Thomas Hawk. Hello, Thomas. Hey, Trey. How's it going? Good. Good. So I'm Thomas Hawk. Uh, you can find me at thomashawk.com uh, or, of course, Thomas Hawk on Google+. Uh, just an easy search for Thomas Hawk comes up with lots of uh, stuff. And I also host a photo show every Wednesday night at... 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time called Photo Talk Plus, along with uh, my co-host Lotus Carroll. Great, good to see you, Thomas. Um, to see and you. Um, how about you, Karen? Give us the scoop on Karen. How about me? Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Hutton, and uh, I have two halves. Well, I have many halves of my world, but there's the voiceover, and there is the photography. They come together in a beautiful app called Stuck on Earth by our own Trey Radcliffe. I'm the voice of the guide on Stuck on Earth. And uh, you can find my uh, voiceover work at KarenHutton.com. Indeed, I am one of the hosts of Life Through the Lens. Uh, that is on uh, bi-weekly, as Kelly said. Our next show is January 31st, where our guest will be the great Jaime Ibarra. And you'll see his work tonight. Um, my work is at my photography work is at Google Plus and KarenHuttonPhotography.com, and it is a joy to be here. Well, thank you, Karen. I I didn't ask you to plug uh, Stuck on Earth, but it's a free app, so I don't mind plugging a free app. Thank you for for all your work there too. And let's hi. say hi to uh, Chad, who's helping us out at uh, at Twit. Hey, Chad. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, I, this is so exciting. I was just explaining to uh, uh, Brian here. How cool this is. Um, it switches for me. I can lock on people. This is just such an amazing um, uh, uh, idea, and I I'm very excited to see the rest of the show. So uh, back to you guys. Cool. Well, thank you, Chad, for all your help there. Um, well, we're going to get started by showing off a few different uh, photographers and, and this sort of thing. Uh, Sergey, since you don't have too long... Um, I did want to ask you something about photography, and you know, you're you're welcome to share some stuff if you're. You can actually start if you like. Uh, you know, you're you're known for uh, you know building Google or whatever big deal, right? But uh, <laughs> also, you know, you do photography, right? And uh, you've been sharing your stuff. And is this sort of a second love for you? And and what's it like to share your photography online? Um. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy sharing my photography quite a bit. Uh, you could say the Google thing, you know, you can just get lucky on one company. Uh, but it takes, uh, you know, a lot of work and skill to be able to deliver lots of great photos. So I don't know how well I'm doing the photography department, but it's, uh, it's definitely lots of fun to have completely new works every single time. Um, let's see, I didn't fully prepare. I know you asked me to have a few of my photos ready to go and... Uh, and uh, um, and a few of other people's. I was I was just looking at one actually. Um, I, how do you folks do this? Do you just copy and paste the URLs or? Well, do you have a little screen share button up there? There's oh, a guy in here named yeah, T2 yeah, who might share. be able to help you with screen. Hangouts. Should I just pick the window that I'm in? Hang on, I'm kind of I'm scared. Yeah, click screen share and then you can uh, pick to. a different window to I'll share. Take a little. Uh, a little doing. I'm just because I want. Um, <laughs> Uh, but anyway, the photo I'm going to pick is uh, um, this one of this fellow named Edward, who I, uh, I posted a little while ago. He lives by himself on an island. Um, I want to highlight a few uh, different things about it. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. I've got him by himself now in a window. One momentito. Uh, there we go. Okay. You should be now seeing um, this one particular photo. Uh, and you can also, you can just see it in my stream. Um, uh, one thing I want to note is I shot this with uh, not like a full frame SLR. This is the Sony A77. Right. And uh, I started using that more recently. Um, I really like the technology some of these newer cameras are, uh, are going with, especially like uh, this one is not technically mirrorless, but it's got the uh, continually static 10% mirror or 15%. Um, 
And uh, it has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. Um, oh, but frankly, I'm impressed with the image quality. The real downside in my mind is that it's not a full frame sensor. And when you start shooting uh, like in lower light and whatnot, you know, the noise inherent in, in the smaller sensors uh, becomes evident. Uh, but one thing you'll notice here, it, uh, I didn't do this, is just, I think, pretty much on auto. Uh, it kept the blues blue. Uh, I found with my uh, Canon SLRs, oftentimes uh, it'll blow out the blue uh, on uh, you know, the exposure control. Just you, you end up with a sky that's kind of grayer than it really is uh, because the blue value will have shot past its maximum. Um, but the Sony does, I think, a better way of a uh, better job of controlling the exposure, um, and kind of um, you get to you know this is obviously brightly lit, and you get very good. Um, I don't, can you guys see my mouse there? No, but anyway, you get um, you get fine detail in the in focus region, uh, and uh, very good color. I mean, I I don't remember. I might have tweaked this slightly uh, with. Uh, I hate to sound like I'm advertising our own products with Picasso, but this isn't even <laughs> Photoshopped or anything. I, and I think it was very marginal adjustment. Yeah, it looks great. Um, we talked last week all about these um, SLTs and these mirrorless cameras and how you know a lot of us think that DSLRs might go away in the future. And I, I know that camera very well, that A77. It is a, it's a fine machine, and I'm, I'm Sony curious myself. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm waiting to get, uh, I haven't been able to really get one. They're all out of stock, but the next sevens, I don't know, I guess maybe their factory has got affected, but uh, either by the uh, tsunami or by the um, um, Thai floods or something. But uh, the next seven uh, uh, is sounds like it's very similar to this A77, but even more compact. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. That's good. I'm going to turn off screen sharing. Now you all know what image I was talking about. Um yeah, I just I wish some of these newer technologies were applied to uh, you know still full size sensors because I do feel like you start to get into battle of technology versus physics and they're both pretty important. Hey, yeah, I know. The, uh, Go ahead, Gordon. Sorry. I was just going to say the benefit of the next seven is that you get the same sensor as the A seventy seven, but you don't have that fixed mirror in front of it soaking up thirty percent of your light, so you get the same resolution, the same kind of color rendition but it becomes suddenly more sensitive because there's no mirror in the way. So the, the next seven is a really nice solution for that. Do any of you actually have one? I, you know, I just looked online and, you know, looked on Amazon and whatnot, couldn't find it available. But. I don't feel so bad that I can't get one now that I hear that you can't get one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, uh, <laughs> I shop online just like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for showing us that. Uh, uh, I'll go ahead and show off a few other uh, photographers I found thanks to um, Google Please. Plus, and uh, and I'll kind of you know you guys get an idea of uh, how quickly we can move through this stuff. Just uh, you know, I think we could spend hours talking about every one of these photographers on here. But well, this is just sort of a uh, like a little little buffet, sort of an amuse bouche of sorts. Okay, so let me share my screen here. And, uh, you know, anyone can feel free to chime in. I don't want to dominate the conversation or anything as I show this. And then we'll go to uh, Thomas next. Let me find, uh, here we go. Here's my iPhoto. So um, this is sort of a wild wow. card I just threw in. Um, I've been following <laughs> this girl uh, for a while. Um, these images that she comes up with are just crazy. I mean, obviously they're they're macabre and different and and this sort of thing. She does sort of horror type stuff, but I mean, I would love to see like a, a movie just even based on this image. Uh, her name is uh, Diane Tunstall and Danielle. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, that's correct. Right. And uh, she has all kinds of images. I'm just going to show one of hers. And I hope that intrigues you enough to circle her and go look through her stream and through her albums because it's Is that really, really interesting. Um, so here's another one of my uh, uh, people that I chose. Her name is uh, uh, Midori Chan. She is a uh, Japanese photographer. And she has incredible range. Of course, she's in beautiful Japan. 
which is almost like cheating if you just live there because there's so much awesome stuff. But um, she just comes up with these images that are amazing. And she travels all around the world and does all kinds of images. Mm. Uh, this is in the Sahara. Um, I don't know where this is, but it's awesome. Um, here's another one of hers that I think is really, really nice. And she's got incredible range. And I was talking on the phone last night with uh, Tom, and we just couldn't believe that anyone has so much range. I didn't even show all of her flower pictures and everything, uh, but she is she is great. Uh, that's Midori Chan. Definitely circle her up and look through her work. She's, uh, she's fantastic. Um, now, here's a new guy uh, that I found thanks to Google+. Actually, I had so many people recommend that I follow this guy and circle him that I did. And I'm so happy. His name is Henki Kointjoro. Um, I don't know anything about this gentleman. But, you know, actually sometimes I kind of like not knowing about him because I kind of intuit their soul through their photos. Uh, he's great. Um, you probably get a good sense of it just from that one picture. Um, as far as I can tell, he does exclusively black and white. And he just comes up with these very... Um, romantic compositions. Um, it gives me all kinds of ideas. He makes me want to go out and shoot black and white photography. And to me, this is the kind of guy that, um, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter how many years you've been shooting or if you're just getting started, this is the kind of guy that gets you interested in photography. And it's, um, he just gives you so many ideas because, I mean, as creative as we think we are as photographers or whatever, you see other people's creativity and you think, oh my gosh, you know, there's, it's limitless, the compositions and the ideas you could come up with. And this guy kind of gives a window into that. Now this is Hayame Ibarra. Um, he is a, uh, a wonderful photographer. Um, it sounds like he's going to be on Karen's show coming up. So you can find out more January about him. 31st. Yep. On the 31st. I mm -hmm. think he was on Hangout number 10 uh, with me a while back, and he is uh, great. Actually, he just goes on and just talks about his photos and how he comes up with these things. Um, I like him because, uh, well, obviously for the images, but I also like that he's sort of self-taught, and he just figures out this stuff himself. Um, it just kind of goes off and spirals off out of control and does his own thing. You know, like this is a girl uh, here in Austin and she's like an accountant or something, and she came over and wanted him to take her picture, and he just kind of just came up with this. You know, <laughs> I don't know how he does it. Um, anyway, just uh, just remarkable. Uh, that's Hayame Ibarra. And I plus mentioned him, just like everybody else, so you guys can easily um, circle him up. Okay, so those are kind of my three. Um, uh, let's go uh, to Thomas. Thomas, do you have some people you'd like to share? Okay, I sure do. Let me just pull this up. Share selected window. Okay, I think... Can everybody see it now? Yes. Oops. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so this uh, first person I'm sharing is Ivan Makarov, who is a friend of mine, and... Let me get and he's doing the book, too, for the Google Plus book, right? He is, he is. He's doing the uh, G Plus one uh, photo collection, which is terrific. I guess there's like 300 uh, photographers that have contributed to this book. Sergey, so, are you going to be in that book? I'm, you I'm should get sure Sergey in there. Sorry, I think. I'm not sure I've quite followed the book, to be honest with you. Uh-oh. I'd be yeah. happy to, but I... Well, he might have missed the deadline, because the de deadline was yesterday, but somehow I have a sense that if Sergey wanted in, Avon could make an exception. Uh, well, <laughs> only if my photos uh, speak for themselves and are worthy. Well, it's a, it's a, the thing that Yvonne is doing is wonderful because it's getting the community together, and basically he asked everyone to get their best photo from 2011, and then every they're going to publish this group book. It's a wonderful sort of collaborative community thing that's come out of Google+, Plus, which is just, I love seeing that sort of stuff. So well, I'm happy to participate in any way, but I haven't... Uh, Kept track with it. I'm not very good with deadlines either. Okay. Well, <laughs> we may try to get an image in yet. Right. So, uh, so anyways, these are these are Yvonne's photos. He does a lot of uh, work at the coast, uh, it, which is some beautiful black and whites, which I love. 
Um, he also does, let's see, here's a black and white photo of his. Uh, uh, just, uh, yeah, wonderful, just midair. You get the water below and just this sort of perfect, perfect pose as the dive is going off. Um, Yvonne is a father and does wonderful photos of children um, and babies. This is his son when he was born shortly after. And I just love how he uses depth of field here, how you've got the feet in focus and you've got such soft muted colors with the white and the blue. <coughs> and this is, a, this is a, a, a somewhat famous pier. This is down the peninsula off the coast and it's sort of a abandoned pier that's uh, obviously missing most of the pier. And it's a long exposure shot and you can see just how the, the clouds and the mist and the sea just uh, blends in to create this really dramatic black and white effect. So Yvonne was the first photographer I wanted to share. Um, my co-host on Photo Talk Plus is Lotus Carroll, and I wanted to show some of her work as well. Uh, Lotus does a lot of self-portrait work. I thought that was you, Thomas. An, oh, you thought those were my legs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, not quite, not quite. But um, but I, you know, I just I love uh, you know just sort of the focus on the leg all the way down as the line runs down the leg along the bottom of the foot. Um, I think the lighting is just great um, and. So that's one I wanted to show. Lotus does a lot of self-portraiture work. Uh, this is another one of her self-portraits. What I like about this one is she did took it with an iPhone. And so I think a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, I can't do much with camera, you know, phone type stuff. But uh, I thought it was a very great self-portrait, and it also shows some of the processing skills involved. But, um, you know, another self-portrait of Lotus. This one a lot of people thought was actually a photograph of Lotus, but it's not. It's uh, actually a neighbor uh, girl with her son, and they've fallen asleep on this couch, and you can see the dog sleep there in the shoes. And it just it, – uh, it reminds me of something like Mary Ellen Marks might have taken or something, just a real sort of documentary style, uh, you know, beautiful photograph. And then this is actually, I'm a little biased because I'm in this photo. I'm the guy on the far left. But uh, Lotus and I went and shot Detroit for the auto show uh, with Ford. And uh, as part of that, uh, or as, as apart from that, we went out and did some urban exploration photography. And uh, we got up early one morning to catch the sunrise at Doblo, Bo uh, Doblo Docks, Boblo Docks, which are some docks right on the river that separates Detroit and Canada. And... We got up for sunrise, and while most of us were shooting plain old boring sunrise photos, she was capturing silhouettes, which I thought turned out real well. And then the last photographer I wanted to share with everybody is Vivian Gutswa, who is a New York photographer. There's a wonderful uh, Google Plus sort of New York photo scene going on. I don't know if you guys have watched this, but with, with people like Leanne Staples and uh, people have – you know, they're doing a bunch of photo walks, and we're going to have actually, I think, all uh, all New Yorkers on our show on a Wednesday night, and we'll talk about some of the New York photography, but uh, Vivian's going to be on our show on Wednesday night, but these are some of her photos. Um, you know, I love what she's done here with the light in Chinatown, in New York's Chinatown. You can see those shadows coming off the, uh, off the fire escape. Uh, I love how she does that. Um Here's another one of her photos. This is one of my favorite places to shoot in New York. It's the, it's in Central Park, and it's this sort of alley with all these trees, and when they get covered with snow, I've done some photos of this myself in New York, and it's just beautiful. And uh, here she's got just sort of the perfect uh, color element with the umbrella in the middle, and I thought that, uh, that turned out real well. Um, here's another shot of hers of some tulips. I mean, just again, very vibrant, striking color. Uh, and then here's a pretty traditional New York scene that she's done. Um, you know, everybody's seen the Empire State Building, but uh, I love the processing here. I love the coloring. I love how, you know, you've got this sort of dark vignette at the bottom. I love um, sort of the bright overexposed area in the center of the photo. So I thought, uh, you know, both both the, an interesting subject matter and architectural shot uh, – but also the um, interesting processing that she seems to do so well as well. So, anyways, those are the photographers that I wanted to share. 
Cool. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Oh, Trey, if I may, I just before I sign off, I have to run off in a second. There was one other uh, photographer I would love to introduce you to. Yes, sir. Go ahead. All right. So this is uh, Helmenedia Ranford, who I don't actually know, but um, I've been following her on Google+. Plus. And uh, this is probably one of the, uh, you know, one of my favorite examples of her work, mostly because it just uh, creates these uh, amazing landscapes that look quite alien. And uh, I, uh, I'm pretty excited to actually visit some of these places just based on seeing her photos. So that's a favorite of mine. Uh, and I uh, just wanted to uh, encourage all cool. of you all it's amazing. to follow her. Beautiful. Sergey, do you know where that is, where that was taken? Uh, yeah, that's Mount Bromo in Indonesia. Ah, uh, I've never yeah. been to Indonesia, but it looks uh, amazing. And, wow. uh, and I got the feeling that, uh, you know, based on her other posts, it wasn't like she's not a volcano chaser. So I got the feeling this was, you know, she was not like so lucky to get the, I mean, she was not trying hard to get this. It happens that she traveled there and there was a little bit of activity, but the feeling I got was, you know, you could go there and see these beautiful things, but perhaps not capture it quite so beautifully if you're not so skilled. Cool. That is magnificent. Anyway, I just wanted yeah. to share that one uh, with all of you. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, I have to run off, but I'd love to catch all of you again, and of course, I'll try to catch uh, the, the, this recorded uh, uh, later on. All right, uh -huh. excellent. Well, thanks for coming, Sergey. See you around. Go do nice awesome to see things. You. Bye. Bye. Okay. Now that he's gone, we can all relax a little bit. She's like, oh, fight. the boss is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, you can't fire you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then Trey says, did I say that out loud? <laughs> no, yeah, I wonder if he was watching a... the chat stream. He's a cool photographer. We, we all like him. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether or not he founded Google, he's cool. All right. So uh, <laughs> let's go next to uh, let's go next to Karen. Karen, why don't you share something awesome with us? I will do that. I just have to choose my little screen. Then I'm going to go full screen with it. Can you see that? Um, we see a blank what? screen, Karen. Right. Can't, can't go full screen with it because it shares the original window. Right? Can you see that? Yes. Mm, yes. All right. <clears throat> I nearly had an anxiety attack when you said pick your three favorite because I'm like, what? I've got like 20 in every department. <laughs> so um, I had spent a day kind of sweating and breathing hard. And then, I mean, for the anxiety reason, don't go there. Uh, I then decided that because in my own work... Um, just the stuff I'm exploring is story and fantastical and, you know, that altered reality kind of thing. Um, I find myself going to people like Laura Ferreira. I believe that's how you say her name. And um, she's, a, she's a photographer and a graphic artist, and she does stuff like this that I just think is so cool. So I go there, and it isn't necessarily that I do what she does or even think I could do what she does. Wow. But I look at that and I just think different. I just start going, oh, look at that. And you can look at the root of a tree. Crazy. And yeah, I know. And, and sort of imagine that. And um, of course, elephants are just, oh, love elephants so much. And, and then I sometimes feel I resemble this, rem this remark. Um, love it. I don't know that I could ever, <laughs> but I just look at it and I'm completely inspired by her work in every way. Um, my second one, actually, <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I came up with four, so I'm apparently a rule breaker tonight, but, uh, Alan Shapiro. Oh, that's not the one we want to look at. No, wait, how did we get there? Sorry. I'm just going <laughs> the wrong way. I can steer. Don't get on my case. Um, Alan Shapiro is a photographer here on Google Plus whom I adore and I love his texture work and, and layers and this just blows me away because this bird is like coming out of the monitor at me and pecked me on the cheek one day. It was kind of weird. But anyway, I love um, that part and then his natural world and his colors and, you know, use of the focus and and it's it tends to be it's one way that I see the world in this micro focus and I just really really enjoy it um he did the same thing here which this is squash and yet it looks like this bizarre 
creature from the you know Black Lagoon, and I love it. And I love his black and white work because my my beginnings were in black and white. And um, and of course, I love animals. And you know, anybody can get an ape to look at you like that, honey. He's got something going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he was on he was on your show, wasn't he, Thomas? On Photo Talk Plus. Muted, Thomas. Muted. Oh. There we go. Is that better? There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, Alan was on our show. We did an interview with him, which was great. And uh, he's actually going to be a panelist on this uh, show, show on Wednesday night as well. Oh, that's fantastic. So you can go to Photo Talk Plus Tuesday night and hear him there. He is wonderful. Wednesday. Um, Wednesday, but yes. Wednesday, I'm sorry. I've got Tuesday on the brain for some reason. Wednesday. <laughs> now, this is a photographer who is um, whose name I can't quite pronounce. But uh, he is, I love his texture work and his minimalist work. Same guy does this oh, and this. Gorgeous. I know. I, I don't have that person circled. I need the link. I know. And this. F um, Philippe, I thought he actually has all these water. Um, what am I trying to say with a signature on it? There Is that we go. Philippe, Philippe. St. Laudy? Thank you. Yes, he's French. He's a, he's a, he's a friend. He's, a, think, he's he? an incredible photographer. Oh, my God. Uh, that guy is insane. Insane. Yeah. Insane. I had a really hard time picking, you know, he, I bet he you does. Did. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I just, oh, oh. this, the perspective and the color and, you know, yeah. again, the perspective and the use of light. I mean, I love what he does with light. This is just, it's just crazy. Yeah. And, it seems uh, a shame to only show four or five photos. Uh, I know. But it's, I it's hope it just intrigues people to go circle all these people and drink in their work. Exactly. That's what they yeah. should do. They should absolutely do that. Um, the final one, and I'm hoping this shows up. Her f uh, the largest size I could get were small. Claudia J. That's Claudia with a K. Mm -hmm. Claudia J. Does this, um, and it's usually uh, really muted tones and textures and layers. This with the use of her light and what you can. It's almost as exciting what you can't see in this as what you can. And I love that. I love the colors and the leading lines. Um, same thing here, the point of focus. With all that that you can't quite see in the background, it just makes you so curious and takes you into it. And again, love black and white. Same thing here. So those are my four. And they all just sort of pique my, you know, story, imagination. Like, I just, I can pick up my camera after that and just go, I've got new ideas. I love that. So. Cool. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hey, before we go to Chi, I realize I forgot to <laughs> introduce and thank uh, Dave Veffer. I guess because we had the timer up, I was thrown off. But how are you, Dave? You're muted. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, no, you're you not. Find muted, me. No. Go, you Dave. Can find me at plusdave.com. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Happy to be here. Thank you, Dave. All right, Chi, you're on the pitcher's mound. Don't mess okay. up. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I didn't quite follow the rules, and I'm glad to hear that a few other people didn't quite follow the rules either. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I picked three um, photographers who are on Google+, Plus, um, and I was told not to pick Trey, but I picked Trey anyways. Uh, <laughs> See, you don't pick me. All right. You but, rebel. Um, but I'll tell you what, can can you see this? My, my uplink on my hotel is kind of low, so hopefully this will come through. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so like there, I mentioned this before to I think Dave. Um, there are like five big photo events in my life. Um, each of them cost me several thousand dollars. Um, uh, like going out on my own, and so I bought my first camera. And so I bought all the stuff with it. Uh, having a kid, so I had an excuse to buy uh, N70, and I spent a lot of money buying a film camera. Um, and then I kind of plateaued. Like a lot of hobbies, you like do something and then you kind of get better at it and then you plateau for a while and you get kind of frustrated and then something happens and you kind of start growing again. Um, and, and then, um, so one of the other photographers is someone I'll get to who sort of got me to get reinvigorated and I had my second kid and then I hit a plateau and then get, met Trey here on Google Plus and like on Google Plus my first introduction to him and his photography thing is amazing but this picture actually really hit home for me because what he what you told me about this one, if I remember this right, is that you said that you really screwed up this picture. That it was dramatically overexposed, and you sort of recovered it. Um, and 
that, that sort of made me sort of think, wow, I have lots of overexposed photos. <laughs> and maybe like I could somehow learn how to make one of them look like this. So um, so this one has special meaning for me. Um, this, this one, um, the Temple of Heaven, is one of my most favorite places on Earth, especially if you go early, early, early in the morning and there's no one there. It's so peaceful and I, I just kind of connect there. So I love that. Um, Google, of course, uh, means a lot to me right now. Uh, and I go there, and like this is kind of how I look at Google. This is how I see it. But I, like, but my pictures of it don't turn out this way. So that kind of inspires me. Um, and this one is the capital of Texas and Austin, if I if I'm correct on that. And like I'm, I I have a picture at the same sort of location that looks nothing like this. <laughs> so. So this is like the inspiration of kind of where the other picture I, that I took uh, about eight years ago. Yeah. Where hopefully one day it will go. So um, so that's that's why I picked you, Trey. Wow. Yeah, you had that effect. Thanks. Rock on. The, I'm the behind other, you, Chi. I'm with you, Chi. The other, um, the other photographer that's now on Google+, Plus, he doesn't have a lot of photos here, but he also cost me a lot of money, is, um, is Joe <laughs> McNally. Um, and is this this cover of his book, The Hot Shoe Diaries? Like I saw this and I was just sort of floored. And before reading that book, like I sort of tried to capture the picture of sort of what's there. And the the thing that that really hit home for me was how he like he manipulates light, where he makes light do what he wants it to do, and he uses these little like small flashes to do it, um, which is stunning to me. And so I ended up buying um, an SB28, uh, 800, and 900 uh, because of him. Uh, and I started playing around with, with gels and all that sort of goo. Um, so I, I love these photos from him. Uh, I love the color of this. I, like This is a beautiful uh, young woman here with a with that gorgeous background. Um, and the, the lighting, I just, I, I just love how the whole thing is lit, and when you think about it, it's, it's like you can tell that he placed the light there. It just didn't happen just to be there. So, so I love that. <laughs> and then the other one um, is here, Mike Shaw, and he has he has a quite a wide range from these uh, portraits, uh, black and whites. And I have a hard hard time with portraits. Um, I'm always impressed by someone who can really not only capture aesthetic but also capture meaning and expression. And, uh, and so I, I like his, um, his portraits. He also does these great landscapes with amazing color. Um, and this is a beautiful picture. With, and the, the pebbles under the, under the water just really stand out to me. Um, so I, I, thought, I find this one stunning. And then like, this is a black and white that really like, screams color to me. Like, I can just imagine the colors, but there's no color mm -hmm. in there. So, so I, I love this photo. So there, there's, those are my three, and uh, and why I chose them broke the rules. <laughs> well, great, thank you, Chi. That was good, and we'll come back to you soon, and you can uh, we'll all show off some some of our new work. And we'll get back to you soon. Who's next here? Let's go to uh, hey. Kelly. Hello, hello. Um, <clears throat> I am going to. I also had a really difficult time picking only three. Uh, Helen Satiriadis is, you know my go-to for everything because she's crazy awesome and perfect in every way. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't choose a highlighter today because I highlight her all the time and, you know, she's just awesome. Uh, I chose three others. The first one is Perry Murphy. I'm going to start trying to share her shot. Let's see. Let's try that again. Okay. Okay. Okay, we see. How it is that? It's good. Does it work like? Uh, does it work like that? Yes, it's good. I love okay. to see a master with her tools. <laughs> <laughs> How I love my tools. Um, <clears throat> I realized something when I was picking my my three, and that is they they all have something in common, and that is that they. Oh, wow, slow. They bring me. 
Well, hold on a second. We I'm may not see back. what you want yeah. us to see. I'm going to go back. Okay. There. You see that one? We see five, we see five thumbnails. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. That's no good. Maybe I tried you to share, share your desktop. Screen. How's that? No? No. Nope. Now we still see the five thumbnails. Shoot. When you pick a window to share, uh, try yeah. sharing um, your whole desktop. It's the very first option when it says okay. share window. The very first one will be entire uh, desktop. Let's try that again. Although we may see something very embarrassing on your oh, desktop. Oh, hush you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what we'll see. Oh, you wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay. Okay. I see you. How's that? All right. <laughs> now we see now, Karen. Now okay. See? Yes. Now you see what I'm seeing. We see a big white flower, yes. Awesome. Um, this is Carrie Murphy's flower. Um, <clears throat> what I love about the people that I picked is it's interesting. I, I chose um, photographers that move me in a way that I, I just can't uh, explain. And I tried to put words to it, and I realized that they all have something in common, and that is um, they all bring me to some sort of alternate reality. It's the world, but not quite the world. It's, it's uh, you know, a parallel world, if you will. And um, the kind I that I would that. just love to climb into the photo and, and, and go there. Um, <clears throat> they all also have a sense of longing in some way. And they never forget. Each one of these photographers I picked also have a sense of whimsy. And <clears throat> this is not only whimsical, but it's, you know, shoots straight to the heart. I am a photographer. And this one kills me. This one, you know, because this, this it, I, I don't know if people saw Carrie's post to go with this, but... This is something that a lot of us struggle with, and that's calling ourselves photographers. You know, where do you get to the point where you can actually label yourself a photographer? Do you have to have income coming in from it? What is the deal? And um, that was a pretty moving one. And the next one I have is, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his name. I, I think i got to do a screen share again, right? Let's see. We lost your screen share. I know, I know, I know. I don't have iPhoto, nothing so fancy, you know. So I'm trying again. The next one is Miko Lagerstedt. Sounds and, close enough. Uh, yeah, all right. You know, nobody is here, nobody from Finland here to um, argue that point, right? At least not on the show. Now, do you see that? Yes. Yes. You do. Okay. Um, how about that? Better? No? Yes. 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 Miko's um, <laughs> photos are, are pretty stunning. Again, the same thing. There's some sort of sense of longing for me that I feel. They're a little bit dark and sometimes a little bit sad. I, that's the way I feel when I view these images. Um, and again, reality but not. It's an alternate reality for me. Oh, I love and that one. Is that a killer? Yes. <laughs> um, and a sense of whimsy. You know, he... He has a little fun with his Photoshop, right? He has a little fun with his Photoshop, and he, he throws things like that in there. It's cool. And, um, you know, even that's just a basic shot of, uh, of um, okay. Well, oh, and then the last one I picked, which is so awesome. Okay. <laughs> and I have to go I get He's so great. And he only has about 3,000-plus uh, followers. So, um, and that's just not right. Do you see that? Yes. Ooh. Beautiful. His name. Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to pronounce this again. He's also from Finland, which is strange. So, um, Ulf Bjolin. That's that's a wild guess there. But um, again, a sense of the world, but oh, not quite the world. Something I'd really like to um, step into. Even a flower, he can mm. make seem somewhat a little bit different and dark. And um, <clears throat> let's see. Whimsical and fun too. He called. I think he titled this "Not Angry Birds" or something. You know, just just for fun. And that's the last one for him. Oh, Bjorn. Okay. Great. I'm good. Well, thanks. Those are great finds. I mm -hmm. when I saw your suggestions come in, there were two of those people that I had never circled. So I, 
I personally thank you because there's some winners in there. Thank you. Really? Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, that's what I feel like. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel. I feel like I, you know, I spend so much time on Google Plus, and then, uh, and then I I drill into somebody that maybe I know that it worked from someplace else, and I didn't realize they were on Google Plus, or I just had failed to circle them before. And then I kind of give them this late circle. I kind of limp in at the last second. I feel like, oh, I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't have him circled earlier. So. You know, there was another thing. You know, you said photographers for this, and I almost did this anyway. But there is a, a woman who I believe she does web design. She curates artists and some photographers whose name is Leodor Solenier. It's L-E-O-D-O-R. Oh, my God. The, the artists that she collects are, you know, on my days when I'm just like, I don't know what to shoot. I go over there and I just start looking at her artists, never mind her photographers, and, mm. and completely inspired. So I just wanted to throw that in there too. Good. We'll link her up too so she gets some, some followers. Yeah. All, not that followers matter, by the way. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, let's go uh, to Gordon. Hello, Gordon. Hey. How are you, Trey? Good. How, how's New Zealand? It's uh, the middle oh, of summer. Well, yeah, it's the middle of summer. Obviously, there's a lot of news about the mega upload thing. I believe the latest thing is that we're going to extradite him, but we, we want you in return. <laughs> yeah, let's trade. Well, it'll be like a Checkpoint Charlie. We could cross <laughs> at the German border. Maybe we could use some of those sports cars they kind of uh, they impounded, and you could race across the border <laughs> like that really fast. Yeah, I want some of those cars. Uh, what are yeah. they going to do with those cars? Are they gonna just going to sit there and holding, or what? I don't know. I think most people are more excited by the number plates, actually. That, that seems to be uh, bigger news today. <laughs> yeah, what were the license plates called? What did they have oh, on I there? I saw things like Mafia and Guilty, and this is me doing my gang signs. You can say, I'm not, I'm not so good at it, so I'll stop right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't really sell it. <laughs> yeah. See, that's... that's that's kind of more scary guy. You got to go a little yeah, more. Yeah, that's gay. kind of more like the monsters, yeah. isn't it? That's kind of Nosferatu. <laughs> <laughs> I've blown it already, haven't I? I've blown it. Yeah, no, you, you got to go sideways with the feet like that. That's how you got to do it. Hey, that's that. That's it. I can't. I cannot Wait. compete with that. Gordon, do this, boy. Just do that. Just do that, <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. That's it. It's a okay. start. You sound a little bit too much like the, the gecko from the Geico commercial saying that. Oh, not that English muffin again. <laughs> All right. Okay, share your finds with us. Yeah, yeah. Well, like uh, Karen and Kelly were saying, I had great difficulty picking just three, and in fact, one of them, I was going to choose you, Thomas Hawk, because I really like your, your kind of street style, and, and I, I love Willie Megleston's work. So, uh, But I figured that everyone had you circled anyway, so I picked three guys who... Uh, you may not have come across, uh, so I will start sharing right now. Wait a minute. The window I had open is no longer there. Oh, no. Well, I will, I will save this moment with breaking news that I'm watching the <laughs> chat window, and Lotus Carroll has been kicked out of the chat room for saying uh -oh. something a little bit too blue. <laughs> uh -oh. So I hope she comes back in. Uh, I don't know. I missed what she said, but whatever it was must have uh, uh, upset somebody there. <laughs> wow. Contain yourselves. I know it's exciting, chat room, but let's just let's keep it civil. A family show here. Yes. <laughs> okay. With wine. Yeah, with language. wine. Language. Language, ladies and gentlemen. Language. Yeah. <laughs> and Chi, you, speak with and Chi you can start drinking again now that Sergey's gone. Yeah. <laughs> You're in a hotel room. Can you guys see a picture yet? Yes. Ooh. This is uh, the great uh -huh. Todd Sisson, right? Yes, yes. The first one I wanted to share with you is the great Todd Sisson. He's a New Zealand photographer. This was actually a picture he took during our first Queenstown photo walk. And I really, I'm a big fan of big landscapes. This is, this is actually taken in Queenstown just by the gardens. <laughs> And he, I just really, really love, love his work. In fact, what I, what I thought I'd show you next is, here's a picture of me taking a picture of Todd taking that picture. That's Todd on the left with his tripod getting wet. And on the right stood up there is uh, Jason Law, who also does a similar style of photographs. So if you like your big landscape shots, I would highly recommend following Todd Sisson and Jason Law. They're, they're both two of my favorites. Um, 
this is another one of Todd's. Again, big, big landscapes, uh, often with long exposures. So you've got kind of like the blurring of the water and the big skies. This really says New Zealand South Island to me, and I, I really love those landscapes. That's why why I moved here. So, and and here's another one. This is a fantastic, very, very popularly, very very commonly photographed tree in Wanaka, which is a town close to Queenstown. Um, but you know, Todd's really nailed it here. I mean, it's a lovely light, lovely shot. Um, you know, and there's not not a lot else I can really say about that. Uh, so Todd system for big landscapes. And uh, the next one I wanted to share with you is... Hey, you put that photo in uh, the top 50 spots in New Zealand, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had not seen that, and I, I put it in my future New Zealand trip. I didn't realize that was one of Todd's, so awesome. Yeah, although it's a bit like that um, that church uh, near Lake Tekapo. It's very, very... It's photographed by almost everyone. So um, yeah, well, see, that's the thing is that I don't think people realize this when they live in a country and there's these famous little like this tree in this lake. Well, no one else has ever heard of this. It might be old hat to you guys, but to outsiders, we don't we don't know about it. And uh, mm -hmm. I definitely need to visit that place. Is Todd Sisson yeah, from New Zealand? Yes, he is. Oh, okay. And for those of the uh, for those of us who don't have New Zealand accents or anything other than American accents, he said Jason Law, L A W. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I don't have a New Zealand accent. I'm from Whatever Britain. it is. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> we don't really care. It's yeah. just not American. So, you know, law, <laughs> L-A-W. L-A-W, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move, move on to my next Kiwi photographer. Uh, this is uh, a picture taken by a good friend of mine called Stephen Howarth. He's also wow. a uh, New Zealander. He, he's actually from Queenstown. He's a Queenstown local. Now, I'm not sure how well this is coming across. You might need to look at it actually on his stream if you can see lots of water droplets in a big circle. Now, Stefan is really into his lighting. He shot this with two uh, Canon 580 flash guns, one in front and one behind the model. He's got her in one of the many lakes around here, throwing the water around as he fires this picture in complete darkness. And I just love the shape that he's created with the water droplets. It's a, it's a beautiful picture. One of the reasons I've chosen Stefan, though, to show you is that he's such an incredibly versatile photographer. And, and I think that's part of being a professional in a small town that you have to be able to adapt to different jobs. But also, you know, a demonstration of, of his excellent as, excellence as a photographer. So he does these great portraits um, and really interesting lighting shots. But then he'll do these amazing action shots as well. This is where I first kind of came across him when he was ah. shooting mountain biking and snowboarding. This is actually just outside of Queenstown. That's Lake Wakatipu, the main lake around Queenstown in the background. And he's some distance away here shooting this mountain biker, uh, literally heading towards the edge of this, this cliff in certain doom. God. And this picture was featured in a, in a biking magazine here. Um, so, you know, I, I, really, I really love that. Mountain biking is huge in Queenstown at the moment. So if any of you are really into that, we've got some fantastic parks here. And the last picture I wanted to show you by Stefan is a, is a really cute one. Again, it's, it shows his love of lighting, but also love of fun. This is his dog last year in the snow. <laughs> it's so cute. I really, I just love the look on the, on the dog's face. It's really <laughs> great. It's great. Can't, you can't tell where the snow stops no. and the dog starts. Oh, that is one happy right, yeah. dog. Yeah. yeah. Now, the, uh, my, my third photographer I wanted to share with you is, uh, is a German called Klaus-Peter Kubik. Unlike the first two, I've never met him. I've not even uh, spoken to him, but I love his style of photography. Let me find... Here we go. Now, he's really, obviously, as you'll see here, he's really into architecture, and I love architectural photography. Mm -hmm. I love the geometry, the straight lines, the, the, the angles. And as you see, a lot of things that he does here... It, to kind of really accentuate those shapes is to either use long exposures or some filters on the sky so the, the actual foreground subjects really stand down. And I think if anyone's ever tried to do architecture photography, you might think, well, if you've not tried it, you might think, hey, it's pretty easy, just take a picture of a building, right? But for me, one of the challenges is, one of the things I really enjoy is the technical kind of geometry and perfection of it, that when you look at these lines, they're absolutely straight. You know, the symmetry is perfect and everything is just lined up perfectly. Here's, here's another one. 
you know, it's just looking up at some buildings. But again, I, I love the arrangement of of the buildings here and the and the and the blank space. Again, Thomas has taken a couple of pictures like this as well that I really really love. I, I love this kind of style. Um, I think I think we call it, it, I think we call that architectural upskirt, Gordon. <laughs> Do you get a little slap from the security guard afterwards, Thomas? Sometimes you do. <laughs> if you're feeling lucky. Um, he doesn't just shoot black and white. This is obviously a color picture. But again, I love the kind of organic nature of this and the shapes. And I'm not sure if we'll have time for this later, but um, Trey asked us to maybe show some of our own pictures. And some of the ones that I I'd like to share with you are kind of influenced by all of those three photographers that I showed you. Not I, I took them before meeting them, but they're very kind of, you can see why I, I, I like these photographers because they're, they're the kind of style of pictures that I also like taking myself. Cool. Well, thank awesome. you. Thank you, Gordon. All right, that was fun. Um, okay, now uh, we'll show off some of um, our own recent work and we could talk about it a little bit. Uh, we'll start with uh, Thomas and uh, oh. let's see what you have, Thomas. Okay, hold on. Let me share the screen. Okay. Uh... Why is this not working? Here, why don't you go to somebody else while I get my screen set up here? Okay, I'll, are you, I'll are you pinch it here. Okay, you go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> so here's some photos I've never shown anybody. Um, I'll roll these into the blog. Every day I put up a new photo on the blog, uh, and then I, I share those also to Google Plus and all over the place. Uh, so these are new ones. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let me change my i to share my iPhoto. Okay. Um, so here's one. This is in uh, the Andes. Uh, this was this uh, super remote lake that took a lot of hiking to get to. Wow. I think this is about 30 kilometers into a hike. And these are the kind of places that you see from planes. You know, and you look down, you think, oh, I wonder what it would be like to stand there, you know, but it, you never see anyone around. You never see any roads. You think, oh, it was just impossible to get there. Well, this is one of those just impossible spots. And, and uh, I camped here for several days and waited uh, for things to get just right. Um, anyway. Were you by I'm, yourself? No, no. I had, I had some people there with me. And I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me zoom in. Uh, this is this is a glacier here, to kind of give you a sense wow. of scale. Oh my so you can god! See how big this is. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, here's one. Uh, this is in Paris. This is a place that nobody ever goes to because everyone goes to the hot spots in Paris. But this is the um, sort of Jules Verne type uh, museum on natural history and evolution. And this, this photo is, of course, incredibly busy. And usually I am against busy photos, but the photo is, of course, about the busyness. By the way, I don't really like to uh, overanalyze my own photos, so I'll try not to do that. But uh, what's cool here and what I like with a lot of these photos is you can zoom in and see all kinds of details. Because uh, this is all taken with a, a, you know, a 24 megapixel camera. And not that zooming in to 100% is always important or anything, but it is... It is interesting. Mm. I so, what is the lens? What is the what? Lens. Oh, the lens. This is a fourteen to twenty-four lens. In this case, and also, you know, there's a lot of uh, photo nerds out there that hate slanted lines. And whenever you take a wide-angle lens and aim it down or up, you end up getting slanted lines. I like the slanted lines. I think they're cool, Me too. Me too. and my brain and eyes adjust. And so I just ignore those people. <laughs> uh, Block them. Block them. <laughs> um, here's one. Um, this is uh, from the new Google offices in wow. uh, Los Angeles. They have these awesome new offices down. Um, uh, it's inside a, uh, uh, I think it's a Frank Geary building. And this is the, kind of their hallway of Google Doodles. And... Um, it's just a beautiful idea, and I set up in here just to take this kind of shot. And I didn't really have this idea until the post-processing came in. Okay, so that's that. 
And here's the last one I'll share. Um, I thought this was kind of a nice romantic scene, a little cafe in the, uh, in the, this is up in the um, Alps uh, in Switzerland, a little mountain town called Zermatt, which is probably, uh, you know, it's got to be one of the top three mountain towns in the world. You know, you think about going out at night in the wet streets and it's cold and you're all bundled up and you're going to a nice warm restaurant. You stay there too late and then you walk home. And I don't know, it just feels, it just feels nice to me. Um, anyway, that tall. is my yeah. my fourth photo to share. Those Let me are unshare great. Love my them. screen. Love all the colors. Oh well, thanks, Karen. Yep. Um, okay, okay, I think I got it now, Trey. You want me to go next? Okay, yes, go. You are also a broadcast professional like me, so go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. So these are uh, these are four photographs that I chose to share. Cool. Um, this first one is actually, it looks a little bit like some sort of futuristic landscape or planet, but actually what it is, is a photograph of a macro that I used on the edge of a sculpture at the De Young Museum. And oh, wow. so a lot of times I like to create an entirely new scene out of something that's not intended. And so this is... This is just like a, the edge of a sculpture, and then it's, I'm shooting through glass, which and there's some light in the background that's lighting the sculpture. And so I try to create sort of like this artificial sunset on this plateau on another planet. And um, I love macro it. photography. <laughs> yeah, I love macro photography because you can just do creative things with it that, you know, it's not even really, you know, intended. But you can just use your imagination. So that's the first one I wanted to share. Mm. Um, th this next one, I've been cool. playing around more with different processing techniques. And this is a beautiful church uh, in St. Louis that I went and saw. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, St. Xavier, Xavier's Church or something like that. But um, And it was a dramatic ceiling on its own, um, obviously with this long sort of hallway and these interesting lines and architecture. But I did a lot of processing on it, and I gave it this sort of mirrored, dreamy, blurred effect because I just wanted to create a, a new piece with it and I wanted to do something a little bit different and less traditional than a, just a standard church shot and so I kind of wanted to make it feel almost like uh, you know you were in the church in a dream so that's uh, a shot I took in St. Louis um, th these last two shots are, are shots that I just took in Detroit just recently two weeks ago so this first one, this is in a place called uh, the Bablo Docks, uh, where I shared Lotus's picture of the sunrise earlier. This is down in the pump room uh, or some sort of mechanical room, and I have no idea what these things are, but inside of one of these big tubes was a can of Stella Artois beer, and uh, so I used the fisheye, and I love this new fisheye. Gordon, I've just, you and I talked about this before I got it, and uh, I almost didn't buy it, and I'm just so glad that I did because, for like a particularly like a circular shot like this, I just think because uh, on the on the full frame sensor, it's a you know it's a complete circle. Uh, this lens makes a complete circle, so I square crop them for the most part. But um, I thought it worked really well with this sort of fisheye and looking down this tube, and then you have the beer right there in the center. Um, Thomas, you must have been about two centimeters away from the can. How far away? Yeah. Yeah, no, I was. I was very close. I had to be maybe, uh, you know, maybe like uh, two inches from the edge of the of the thing there. You could see those bolts that are kind of sticking out. I think they were about those were about two inches long. So I'm very close. Um, and then another one of the buildings that we shot was uh, this building called Farwell, which is an old abandoned office building in Detroit. And uh, this is three different levels, three stories of Farwell. Uh, different office rooms and, and what's gone on here is a lot of the graffiti artists have, have painted the windows so that you can see them from the outside and they've used different color paints to paint you know letters and uh, things on the actual glass on the windows and so that had the effect of when the light was coming in of sort of colorizing this light through this these spray painted windows and I thought it was very interesting, and it was a beautiful building. Um, we probably shot it for three hours, and um, 
uh, I just I really love the, the way that the light comes into abandoned buildings sometimes. Can I ask you again um, what lens you used? Uh, this lens was also the 8 to 15 fisheye. So I've been, I've probably been overusing that lens a little bit. But this, but this one was not on the uh, 8 millimeter. It's not the perfect circle. I, I think I had it out to probably like 10 millimeters or something. And then I cropped it, of course. So, um, but I love, you know, I love shooting abandoned stuff and, you know, I always find interesting sort of, uh, elements to dying buildings and stuff like that. And obviously Detroit is so full of that stuff. So anyways, so there are some of my photos. Beautiful. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> um, those are great. Uh, that first one, I mean, they're all good. I hate to, that first one was just insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you ought to, you know, Thomas, you post so many photos, uh, you know, uh, and they're all interesting, of course. But do you have like a top 20? Um, I don't think I do. You should because it's uh, it's inscrutable to people like me because I, I do <laughs> like seeing your photos. But, man, I would love to see uh, what you think your top 20 are. Uh, that would just uh, that'd be you know, great. Trey, the, the hard thing with that, and people ask me about favorites and stuff like that all the time, and the line I give them is, you know, that Joni Mitchell says songs are like children, and it's like, <laughs> you know, how do you how do you pick a favorite? I I just have a hard time. I mean, even picking four here for this show is difficult for me. Not to mention so, you get in different moods, and then other, you know, one week you like this this ten, and next week you like that ten, and I know. I think I Trey, I think I need to hire you as my editor or something. You know. <laughs> It's yeah. anyway, Trey's favorite, not yours. It works cheap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelly, um, let's share yours. I'm on your screen now. Over. Okay. Okay. You can see what I've got up there then. Not me. Hopefully. Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, I chose to go with this one because this is my oldest son, and it's his birthday today. Mm. So um, I shot this this weekend, and it was kind of a bummer because we had planned on doing something, you know, driving and doing something special with a friend, and then the snow came, and it was a really lame amount of snow, but just enough to make it so we couldn't go. So this was from a playground and totally not what he had planned, but he was still a good spirit and posed for me. He's awesome like that. This is just my usual. Mm. Um what um, I like to do, like Thomas said, you know, macros, you know, really change your perspective. It's a completely different, you know, view on the world, and I, I really totally dig macros, so that was something I took this weekend. And we had snow and ice, so I just happened to be walking in the house yesterday, and, and it was just after being at the neighbor's house taking trying to get a water drop shot up their tree. And I wasn't on their property, but he happened to come home at the time I was there and he just moved there and he owns a security, you know, business. And <laughs> he was just so insulted that I was taking photographs of his property. And it was really awkward. And all I said was, hi, nice to meet you. And, um, and he didn't even say hello to me. <laughs> oh my god. He just he just went inside his house. And you know, I'm sure, you know, he's gonna train his video cameras on me going forward. But um anyway, as I was walking in the house trying not to, you know, be too mortified, I found that on my patio. And this again was from the from the playground. We got snow, but that's about as much snow as we got right there. <laughs> just a really pathetic amount. And um so that's that's what I did with that. And I think that's it. Oh, yeah, that's something I'm supposed to get there. We don't need cool. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Hey, uh, I want everyone in the chat room to know. Here, I'll show you my chat room screen. Uh, we're, watching, uh, we're watching everything. At least I am. I think, I think most of us are in here. Yes. And uh, so, you know, if you guys have any questions, um, Dave is uh, keeping track of the questions because we have Q&A. Upcoming quickly here. Uh, so thank you guys in the chat room. Hello, hello, hello. They're all waving. We're awesome. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> all yeah, right. You know, so, uh, what did you say, Gordon? 
The funny thing there is you saw Stefan's uh, picture of his dog uh, scroll up there. I was talking to Stefan just before I came on. I said, Stefan, I'm going to show you a picture of the dog. He's like, no, no, show a picture of like a snowboarder or, an, or a model. And I was like, they'll love the dog. Everyone will love the dog. <laughs> yeah, dogs are always winners. Um, are you next, Gordon? I can go if you want me to. Yes, please do. Okay. Let's see if I can get this to work again. So I want you to shout as soon as you can uh, see a photo on, uh, on my screen. Not my desktop, but natural photo. Yes. Cool. We're in business. Okay. This is the first picture I wanted to show you. This is, um, this is one, of, one of my favorite pictures. Um, and I took it with a Mamiya 7.2. Yes, shock, horror, film, camera. And not even an SLR film camera, medium format film camera, a rangefinder. And this, this camera um, had some amazing lenses. This was taken with a, a 43 millimeter lens that on that size film is like equivalent to 20 or 17 mil. It's a very wide angle shot. And I found this camera incredibly infuriating to use because I could never get it lined up right. I couldn't get any of those nice architecture shots. So instead I went looking for more kind of organic shapes where there, were, there was no definite horizon because they were always squint. Uh, but this is where it kind of worked for me. This is uh, Lower Antelope Canyon, which is near Page in uh, Utah, I believe, which is one of my favorite. I love all the national parks around there. Southwest USA is one of my favorite places to shoot. And the nice thing, the thing I'd say about this picture is that everyone says it's a very, it's, everyone takes pictures in Lower Antelope Canyon. You, you've got those amazing uh, beams of sunlight that, that come through the top and you get these these ace colors. But that's in summer, the height of summer when the sun is overhead. Now, I was there in the depth of winter and you don't get any of that light. But for me, I still love this picture. So I think a lot of places are very famous for, for visiting at certain times of year, but you shouldn't avoid them at other times of year because, you know, there was no one in there. I, I've heard from people who literally, there, there's people everywhere, you know, in this canyon. But when I went, there were only two people there. So, you know, it's, it's quite nice to have it to yourself. Um, whoops. You've seen these. I can't take credit for those. <laughs> this, is, um, this is my shot. So that, that was my landscape shot inspired by Todd, or which inspired me to recommend Todd. And this is my shot that inspired me to recommend Stefan. Um, it, I took it in ju just winter, just gone in New Zealand, uh, just at the end, at an event at uh, Snow Park, which is one of the uh, ski resorts nearby. To Queenstown. This is Jossie Wells, who is a Wanaka lad, who is, I believe, the world champion free skier, or certainly he's right up there. And um, he was doing these these amazing tricks. And I really wanted to do one of these composite pictures. I had no idea how. So Stefan was stood right next to me. He basically told me exactly how to do it. If you want that starburst on the sun, you basically close the aperture right down. I shot this at about f22. This was with the Canon 17 to 40, by the way, and uh, the copy I was using was a bit. It had some marks on the on the front element, and you can see those on the flare on the sun. It's not that nice. Um, I was shooting with a uh, 1D Mark IV at I think uh, 10 frames a second, or maybe seven frames a second. And this was just I never process any of my pictures, but this was obviously layered in Photoshop. And if you've never taken this kind of picture before, it's actually really easy especially if the, the athlete is going in front of a plain background like a blue sky, it's very easy to composite them together. Because I, you know, I test cameras for a living, but I'm terrible at doing processing. I, I try and do everything in camera, so this is the barest minimum. So I was quite, quite pleased with that. Um, what else have I got? Yeah, I showed you some architecture shots earlier. This is one of, one of my own architecture shots. This is inside City Hall uh, in London on the South Bank. If you've ever seen that building, it looks a bit like a motorcycle helmet from the outside. It's very close to Tower Bridge. And there's a fantastic event that London has. I believe it's every year. It's called the Open Day or Open Home. And what happens is a lot of buildings that you would not normally have any access to, government buildings, big banks, that sort of thing, skyscrapers, they open up for a day or for a weekend. And, and you're just allowed to go in. And places where normally security guards would be pushing you away and breaking your camera, they just welcome you in with all your equipment. And it's, it's fantastic. If any of you are visiting London, try and, try and do it around with this open day event. I don't know if it's still happening. I've not been there for five years, but it was around September, as I recall. Anyways, this was inside City Hall, and this again was shot with that same lens as the uh, Antelope Canyon. So this is medium format, uh, again, again, film. 
Um, and I have just one more picture to show you. I thought I'd better show you a digital picture Ooh. as well. This is a comet. This is one of my other passions, which is astrophotography or long exposure work. This was a comet McNaught, which um, was very faint in the northern hemisphere. But by the time it got down here, it felt it was like, I'm going to really put on a big show here. And this was the biggest, brightest comet I've ever seen. I shot this with uh, on a full frame Canon with an 85 millimeter 1.8 lens. And that lens is such a winner. It's one of Canon's best lenses, one of their oldest EF mount lenses. But it's an absolute classic. It's very well corrected. When you're taking pictures of stars with the aperture almost open or wide open, you really notice poor quality lenses in the corners. But this one, this one works. In fact, I'll, I'll have a little closer look at that so you can see some of those star images. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good. When you look right at the edge of the image, they are, they are dots, which is what you want. Wow. This is about, as I recall, about a three or four minute exposure at about 400 ISO. And normally on an exposure like that, the stars would move as, as a reflection of the Earth rotating. So this was on a tracked mount. This is on a little special tripod that, that basically turns around once every 24 hours. So it counteracts the rotation of the Earth so you can do long exposures. Um, so that was, um, that's my other passion is, is long exposure stuff. I don't get to do enough of it, but when you get the chance, it is good fun. And this was just with a normal lens. This proves you don't need a telescope or anything too bizarre. Just a normal 85 1.8. Wow. Wow. Cool. Thanks, Gordon. So, you know, uh, people in chat room love you, Gordon, of course. And if you like Gordon, he's got this, uh, you know, quirky, cute personality or whatever. I don't know how to, how to say it, but, but he's this likable <laughs> okay. guy, right? And so <laughs> you get this when you're on his website, which is sort of a, you know, camera review sites are usually fairly Boring. stolid affairs, but he has a, a nice voice there. And I think I'm going to try to convince you, Gordon, when we're hanging out in New Zealand to kind of brand it more with your own self, like put your little head there, kind of tilted right by the logo <laughs> or something, because it is you. Your voice is there. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I mean, you know, this is great fun. We, 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 we love our hobbies so much. And. For, for years, I wrote for magazines, and we were always told to write in the third person. It was always, we think this, our opinion is this. And I started doing that when I launched Camera Labs. I was writing the third person the whole time. And then I thought, wait a minute. It's a one-man operation. It's just me. Why am I doing the royal we? Why am I saying we? And our opinion is this, and we, we thought this. Well, you know, forget it. I'm going to make it I and me. And, and I kind of only started doing that about a year ago. But uh, hopefully it's not annoying anyone too much. Uh, but I quite, I quite kind of like coming out in that respect. Hey, Gordon, go ahead and unbutton a couple buttons on that shirt for Trey. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's getting late. Doing a little bit of we just need the disco lights now. There we, we go. Got, we got to have you a hot got those, Kelly. They're already in place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, ha he also has a mirror above his bed that says uh, some objects may be larger than they appear. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Trey, I, 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 you would know that, Trey. Well, yeah, well. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> it's his object he's referring to, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Karen, uh, you will uh, bring up the rear, so to speak. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what about Chi? Oh. Chi? No, okay, yeah, let's do Chi, then you. I'm sorry. If I'm going to truly bring up the rear, then Chi <laughs> has to go first. <laughs> okay. Good okay. Uh, I'll, mine will be pretty quick. Um, see, see this one? So this is uh, Pike Place. I uh, took it uh, a couple of months ago. It was a really cold, blustery day. Uh, the sun had just gone down. Um, and I, I, I really never do sort of wet, uh, rainy photography. And I thought I'd give it a try. I took probably like 70 or 80 shots. Um, uh, just playing around, experimenting, um, and I uh, got a set of three that I, I did HDR on trying to make this one. Um, but uh, I, I was just learning a lot and had a, a whole lot of fun just shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and like having lots of mistakes. But uh, I don't know, I just had a blast there uh, shooting that one. That's awesome. Uh, this is actually um, cool. also a couple months ago. Um, this is in Maui, um, right by um, Mama's Fish Cafe, um, a really wonderful restaurant in, in Maui. Uh, I want the, your the travel right schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a really fun trip. I, I went there with my wife. Um, 
uh, a lot of people know this, uh, like, um, part of the Google Plus team went to Hawaii, and so this is that trip. Um, and uh, it, uh, the sun was going down, and uh, I thought I'd give it a shot. I happened to bring my camera along, no tripod, so this is handheld. Um, uh, this is actually um, uh, five shots, eight HDR into one, handheld, uh, and, uh, and very low light. So uh, this one also I took probably like 20 shots in order to get a set of five that was reasonable. Um, so that was fun. Uh, this one, uh, you know, so this is a while ago, back in 2003. Um, my, I took my son to Africa with us on a safari, uh, and he was the youngest person that uh, the she was, he was five at, five years old at the time. He was the youngest uh, one that these guys had ever taken on safari and taken through uh, this uh, this Maasai village. And the Maasai village, they were all used to adult tourists going through. But um, but the kids were kind of fascinated by seeing another five year old there, so this uh, this little boy there kind of squinting at us is like, really? You brought a, a five year old boy with you? And so it's kind of an interesting expression, and I was lucky to catch that. And then um, and this wow. is kind of my favorite picture from the safari. Completely <coughs> uh, just lucky. We were we were driving along. All of a sudden, said like, stop, lions. And then these three cubs, when we stopped, um, they were standing up. And then one sat down, and another sat down, and then the third one in the middle like made a little triangle. And then eventually that one sat down. And I was like so amazed. I didn't look at my camera. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I just like sat there and I just shot, 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 shot. And afterwards, they were way too dark because this is in in a shadow. In very bright sunlight, really, really bright sunlight. This is in the shadow, so the the like this area was way too dark. Um, but uh, after being inspired by Trey's thing about overexposure on the shuttle launch, I went back um, like a, about a month ago and sort of took another swack at like processing this one and came out with this result. So wow. those are my four. Wow, impressive. Great. Yeah, wonderful. That's cool. Um, thank you, Chi. Okay, now, Karen, now, I'm sorry. It was, yeah, now. really, really, Trey, honestly. Uh, <laughs> rearbringing.com. You say <laughs> share the desktop, right? Do not go to that website, anybody. <laughs> Whatever you do. Not safe for work. I'm going to see. If, I think this is the one I really want to share. Now, you tell me if you can see this. Is that a yes or a no? Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So this is one I've been working on. It was from the summer, and um, one of our crazy, crazy cloud sunsets that we get around here. And uh, and I just kind of liked it. So I have to when nature sometimes presents me with such amazing scenes, I really have to resist messing with it too much. But I was messing with it a little bit today. Um, this is one. This is the road. We went the back way to Bodie one day, and um, I had to stop in the middle of the road because Thomas Hawk does, and, you know, so I have mm -hmm. to. <laughs> but the clouds are just so amazing. So Mono Lake is to your left, and then Bodie is, like, to your right, but a little further on. But I just, the eastern Sierras are just so amazing to me. And I just love the clouds and the colors. Gorgeous. And that's a pelican. Ooh, pretty. That's right. We get we get pelicans in our in our pondage every summer, but they only stay for like three weeks, and they're huge and they swim really fast. You can sort of see his his um, what do you call it? Not wake when he cuts the water right here in the front there, where his neck hits the water. They're so fast. They're so graceful in the water, but they are so fast. They just like motor, and they're really really shy, and they don't like people. So I had to sit really quiet, and I felt like. They bestowed their presence upon me that day, so that was how it felt. I love my black and white. I have to return to my roots sometimes, so to speak. So there are some roots to return to. And that was actually down in Yosemite, Trey. Oh. That was um, our walk along the... We shot and shot and shot and shot, and I just... I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I just... I shoot, and it sucks. 
doesn't matter what I do, I sh- and it sucks. And then I just get annoyed. So, but we, but we were still stuck out there because you know everybody else was shooting and liking what they were doing. So I started <laughs> shooting <laughs> um, some of the more micro things that I see, and that was one of them. So I kind of like that. And I know you said four, but I had this too, which is Trey with Thomas's fisheye lens and that crazy tunnel. I just thought I'd share that. We don't see it. Oh, there you don't we see, see that? There we see oh, it now. Okay. Yeah. It just took a second. A little, nice. A little delay. Yeah. So a little Trey Ratcliffe <laughs> in the tunnel action with cars coming. and. I like that shadow on him from the car's headlight that's about to hit him. I know. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I know. It's oh, awesome. All right. Well, thanks. Okay. I unshare that screen. Sorry. Hang no, on. no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Absolutely. Good photo, too. You have another group shot of all of us, too, there. Yeah, that I have that too. You want to see it? Yeah, share that one too. Let me go back there again then. Boom. And then we'll get to Q and A. Uh, Dave's been collecting questions here, so I'm just about to read through them. I don't know. It's not that one. It's that one. Probably take yeah. a second. There's Thomas. Thomas. Awesome. That was before we all got hit by a car, and then <laughs> we came back as photographers in this next lifetime. Sweet. We are amazing that way. It's yeah. Yeah, you know, by the way, uh, uh, we all do these photo walks. I know uh, Thomas leads them, and I think a lot of other people do too. And as far as I know, they're always uh, free, and everyone's invited. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of them. I've got one coming up in L.A. with Tom Anderson and then Hawaii. Um, and then we're going to do them, you know, everywhere. I'm sure Thomas has them coming up. So just stay tuned if you want to join us for these things. Everyone is invited, and, and they're always great little celebrations of photography. Uh, do you have any coming up, Thomas? Uh, well, the next thing that I think we've got scheduled coming up is uh, Jarvie's thing in March in, in Utah. Yeah, that could it's be cool. a week, weekend away. But uh, I don't have anything scheduled right now, but uh, I'm sure something will come up. Hey, Thomas, can you do one in early April? I'll be in San Francisco for a couple of weeks. Oh, definitely, Gordon, for sure. I'll, yeah. come, down. I'll come down the mountain. Let's do it. We'll line it up. Let me know when you're coming. We'll do a big one. We'll do cool. a big one t- next week at, in New York at the massive hurl. I think there's like 60 people uh, scheduled to hurl and do a photo walk. Nice. Wow. And we're doing one when uh, Cassius comes into town. I think that's May or something uh, on his little train tour. Cassius Wright is. Uh, Excellent. All right. So let me uh, pour through the questions here, see what we can find. Um, Here's one from uh, the mysteriously named Web3591. It says, question for Trey. Uh, why do you go to Burning Man? Um, I go to Burning Man. I didn't really know why I went the very first time. It's kind of like I didn't really know why uh, I ended up reading the name of the wind. I think... For whatever reason, because I'm, you know, uh, open about uh, my art and I share everything, that I end up just getting so many suggestions because people come to know me through my art or how I share or whatever, and they say, "Hey Trey, you know, I really think you would like this." It's sort of like a proactive Amazon product suggestion list, and so so many people recommended that I read like The Name of the Wind, and I read it and I loved it. They were right. I also had so many people say, "Trey, you got to go to Burning Man. You would love it." So I thought, I don't know. I mean, aren't there just a bunch of druggies and hippies? And just cra- I mean, that's not really my scene, right? But I went, and they were right. And so this is the reason that I go is because, you know, there's so many places in the world you can go to spend your time. And when you go to a location, you generally know what you're going to see, what's going to be awesome about it. You know, if you go to uh, Paris or whatever, you know, you're going to see the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre and these sorts of things. You go to Burning Man, you don't know what you, you're going to see, but it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be stimulating in an unexpected way. I, I need constant uh, visual stimulation, and I need to be inspired. This is something I know about myself. And when you go there, you see things um, uh, that you just never expected to see in your life. And it kind of really unleashes sort of a, 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 another creative side of you that you you didn't know that you had. You have to go into it with the right mindset. You know, like anything in life, attitude is half the battle. 
And you can generally control your attitude about these things. So anyway, that's that's why I go to Burning Man. Um, and Thomas, you're going to come this year. I think there's a lot of people from Google Plus coming, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to Burning Man this year. It should be great. It's a great time. So I, the big crowd of people are coming. You know what we got to do is uh, we, let's lobby uh, Natalie and other people at Google to do like a Google Plus camp, right? It can't be officially branded Google Plus or anything, but we should get like a, a great big area because there's so many new people that are going that are kind of scared or they don't really know, but we could have this huge camp of people that are all newbies, probably mostly photographers, and maybe we get Google to like bring in a satellite truck or something so we can connect and share our photos. That's and, awesome. That uh, sounds good. And, and you and Vic Gundotra are going to be rooming together this year, right? In your tent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to be sharing a bunk bed and we'll have to get up in the middle of the night with our pajamas with the flaps on the bottom. I like that. Three stooges. Bringing up the rear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the next question? Kelly, here's a question for you. Uh -oh. Are you ready? I'm ready. putting you on the spot here. This is from Raul Inc. He sounds Latin. Uh, Kelly, uh, what macro lens do you recommend? Mm. Um, I'll tell you what I use. I use the, uh, the Canon 100mm 1. or 2.8. It's the L series one. See, I don't even know. 2.8, I think. Um, <clears throat> it's crazy awesome. That's really all I have to say about that. Gordon, which one do I use? It's that one, right? It's the 100 2.8L, I think. You. That's the one I yeah. use. That's the best macro lens for Canon, I think. Okay, so cool. we Excellent. all agree that's the most awesome one. Yes. <laughs> all right, next question. Um, let me see here. This is from Corey Teague. He says, is there any way to take an entire album from Facebook and transfer it to Google Plus. I know the answer, but I'm sure you do too, Thomas. <laughs> Go ahead, Thomas. Well, I, I don't think you really can. I mean, Facebook's yeah. kind of closed. You know, I don't think they really want you doing stuff like that. I think Facebook would rather Google Plus never existed. You know. Wait a minute, Dave is coming in with a. He just sent a link. Tell us, Dave, what's going on? Dave has a hack. I was muted. There's an extension called Move Your Photos on Google Chrome that supposedly will move your photos from Facebook to Google's Picasa, which will in turn end up in your G Plus account. Cool. I'm sharing I'm Chi's screen, screen now. Sharing He's right showing now. it. Oh. Oh, well, maybe there is a way. See what yeah. I know? So uh, we all know how long this will last. Um, because uh, Facebook can shut it down or something. But oh, come on, Chi! Why would they want to do that? <laughs> but you they have can nothing to lose. Amanjan dot com for writing it. Okay, let's see up there. there you go. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Here's another question. Um, maybe this will be the last question we answer, and then we'll. Uh, no, actually, there's so many. I, I'll try to pick a few. There's too many, but I'll pick some. Okay, so what? this is from Josh Armour, spelled with a British spelling with a U stuck in there for style. The correct spelling, Trev. <laughs> uh, so he asks, uh, what lens is the best first non-kit lens, macro, wide angle, or long zoom? Uh, I'll give a quick answer, then Gordon, maybe you can chime in, but it depends, of course, what you're into. I love landscape photography, and if I were to start all over with a new camera, and if I was getting one lens, I would get a wide-angle lens. Uh, I love my Nikon 14-24, to although that's a very expensive lens. I think the Tokina lens is very serviceable and uh, just a fraction of the price. Sigma also has a very inexpensive wide angle lens. Um, and if you're just getting into photography, chances are that you've never actually looked through a wide angle lens. And once you do it the first time, you'll never forget it. It's wild. It's really exciting. And uh, anyway, so if you're into landscapes, that's the first lens you should get. If you're into okay. portraits, something else. 
can I ask you what is considered like wide angle, not ultra wide angle, but just wide angle? Well, uh, I would say a wide angle lens is anything uh, maybe wider than 28 millimeter. Um, is there any kind of official definition? Uh, I think Gordon? 28. I think 28 is officially wide angle. This is obviously tw <clears throat> 28 equivalent on the full frame. So technically speaking, most kit lenses start at an equivalent of 28. So they are technically wide lenses. I think anything wider than 28 is becoming ultra wide. Um, I mean, 24 is my favorite uh, focal length. But in answer to the question, it, it obviously depends what kind of pictures you want to take. And the great thing about <clears throat> having a lens already is the way you decide what your second lens should be is to think about how your existing one is limiting you. When you're zooming in, do you think, oh, I wish you could zoom in a bit further, then get a telephoto lens. If you're zooming out and you think, oh, I wish you could zoom wider, get a wide angle. If you're, if you're trying to focus close to something and, and it's just not focusing, get a macro lens. And if you want to take portraits with a nice blurred background, which I think a lot of people do, then, you know, and I've seen it coming up on the on the chat just mm -hmm. constantly. Everyone shouted, 50 mil 1.8, 50 mil 1.8. <laughs> and there's a reason why they're shouting it, because, you know, Nikon and Canon and everyone else does fantastic value 50 mil 1.8 lenses. They're very cheap. You can get that great portrait effect. They become uh, 75 to 80 millimeter when you put them on a typical DSLR, which is perfect for portraits. And you'll get such great pictures. The other nice thing about them is that they're fixed in focal length, which forces you to to move around, whereas zooms I find, maybe I'm lazy, but what I find is as soon as I have a zoom lens, my feet become glued to the floor and I just zoom in and out. <laughs> God forbid I actually walk towards or further away from the subject or crouch down. You know, you just zoom in and out. So you get a fixed lens, you move around. I'm just going to, in case I don't get another opportunity to say this, I want to issue an apology to everyone in Arizona for saying that Paige is in Utah. It is, of course, in Arizona. I just get so caught up in the landscapes there. It's all beautiful there, but apologies if anyone uh, was offended by that. Two of my favorite states, obviously. 50 mil, 1.8. <laughs> well, Gordon, Gordon I, would, I would have to disagree. For the first prime, I would probably recommend people go with the Canon uh, 1200 millimeter F5.6. <laughs> That's my second choice. <laughs> of, course, of course, Gordon laughs at that one. That's uh, a monster lens. My favorite prime is the 135 f2. I think that'd be the first one I'd buy personally, but it's one of their best, one of their sharpest lenses. It is, wow. it is. But the 50 does make sense. The 50 and the 50 f1.4, I think, particularly with Canon, is it is a very good value. The f8. Yeah, I think that, it's worth spending the extra on it because you get the USM focusing, you get a nice smooth manual focusing ring, and that's important also if you want to pull focus when you're filming video because the, the 1.8 manual focusing is a bit scratchy. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter that much if you're auto-focusing and you're not doing video, but if you are, it's nice to have that smooth manual focusing ring. So if I could throw an, another perspective on it, um, I, the first lens I got after my kit lenses <coughs> uh, was, and actually just bought another one, is um, the Nikon 18-200 uh, VR2. Um, and it's a sort of a all-around walk, uh, walking lens, great for like kids and family as well as travel. And it's not necessarily the best lens in the world because it's sort of an all-purpose thing. But I, I find that I just take a ton more photos with it, and I'm willing to experiment more because I don't I, I don't hassle with bringing a whole bunch of. I'm just I can just grab it and go when the kids are running out the door. I have like a, a specialty lens. I have the like the 70 to 200 uh, like 2.8 lens as well, but I just use this one so much more, and I've, I've come to really appreciate, for someone who's just an amateur, like just being able to grab and go and take so many pictures of it, that's helped me so much. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, okay, let's go through the questions here. Um, Thomas, maybe you can speak to this. I, I will too. I, I get these a lot, um, and I'm sure you do too. Uh, it, actually, there's two questions in here that are kind of the same. Uh, Gary Monroe says, what does a photographer have to do to get your attention? Uh, Trey, and then uh, there's another one here that says, uh, do, do, I can't find it here. I'm sorry. Um, oh, Zach C says, 
There were a few on the subject, but how do photographers grab your attention of you all? I'm not looking for followers, but Trey says brutal honesty would be so constructive. So, uh, you know, I am I am kind of an edge case. Um, let me. Do, I'm just going to share my screen here just to show uh, how kind of uh, what's going on here. Let me share my. Uh, here, here we go. Let me share the Google Docs. And then let me go to this one. So like this example is my, um, uh, like my fate. I, I get messages everywhere. Just like I'm sure um, Thomas does and a lot of other people do. I am completely overwhelmed. I have just thousands, tens of thousands of unanswered emails. And I feel awful because people ask me questions. Like this is just like January 18th. And I don't, you know, some of these people I actually know. I was just looking at this. It says, this is from Jordan Naylor. You used my phone to call your wife and you got back from China. So I actually know this guy. I had to email him back. I just don't have time. Um, look, there's even a, I don't even have time to email back cute girls. Whoa. Um, <laughs> I know. So, uh, Priorities, my friend. <laughs> so, you know, that's just Facebook. And so I feel really bad because people do take a lot of time and they send you long emails. They ask very thoughtful questions. Uh, and they put... I have threads all over the place. It's uh, it's overwhelming. But let me just say, and maybe Thomas would agree, is that you don't really need my attention. My, my attention isn't really worth that much. I, I try to do these hangouts as much as I can and promote other people and and uh, mention as many other people as possible. Uh, but you don't really need my approval. You don't really need my critiques. You know, I'm just a guy. There's a lot of other people that can give you good critiques. Um, but just know that I, I am sorry that I can't uh, be there for everybody. I wish I could replicate myself. I, I can't bring myself to have one of my employees email you back and pretend to be me. That doesn't seem right. So I, these things just sit there unanswered. I don't know, I don't know what to do. Um, Thomas, what, what do you do when people are really trying to get your attention? Oh, I, yeah, I get kind of, kind of the same problem. I mean, between everything that you get, whether it's email, Facebook, mail, Google messages to your profile or, you know, plus even more, you know, plus Thomas Hawk mentions, you know, you just get so much that it's impossible, you know, Flickr mail, there's just so much stuff that comes through, but, you know, I don't know, Trey, I, you know, I just cherry pick some of the stuff out sometimes and respond, but that's, that's not so helpful. Um, you know, I think the thing that gets my attention the most is when I see people leave articulate, intelligent comments. Uh, particularly on Google Plus, because that's where I spend my time. So when I see someone that that writes a thoughtful uh, comment, uh, you know, oftentimes, and not just on my stuff, I mean on other people's stuff. Like I found a lot of great people to follow on Google Plus. Like I might be looking at Kelly's uh, a stream, and I see, oh well, who is this uh, person that's like uh, talking about the Wolf Pack or something like that with Kelly? <laughs> You know, or what is this going on? And but I think it's I think it's the interaction that you see people online interacting, and the comments I think are a huge thing. So I would encourage somebody if they wanted to get more involved with the community, to find some people that they admire. And again, not not just me. I mean, other people is probably even better, and just and leave some thoughtful, intelligent comments on their work and and get to know them. Yeah. yeah, I know. I do the same thing. A lot of times people just come by and, you know, say, oh, I like your picture or whatever. But sometimes, like, I've gotten into a conversation with a um, kid over in, I think he's in Bosnia, actually, and he's a wonderful photographer and with an art student, you know, has a degree in art. And he was just leaving, I don't know, just thoughtful comments about photos. And so we've been talking art and photos and you know, stuff like that back and forth. It's amazing. I mean, I don't know where else you'd ever get a chance to do that, but uh, it's an amazing thing. But you do have to sort of, those thoughtful ones sort of stand out, I find. <laughs> like, so, Trey, I mean, you read your comments on your photos on Google+, Plus, right? Yeah, I do. I read every one of them. Yeah. Me too, and so I, I think I read them all too. about 75% about of my Plus mentions. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good place to start. Uh People can leave comments, but you know, if it's just nice picture, that's not they're not gonna stand out. But if somebody actually takes some time and you know, makes a connection there, you know, I may end up adding them as a contact. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't watermark and all that other bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now you know, Thomas, I showed you some beautiful photos tonight that were watermarked. 
I know you did. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm with you on the watermarks. I generally don't like them, but I'll excuse it in the case of an amazing photo. Okay, anyway, let's one more question. This one is kind of for Gordon, um, although anyone can jump in. Uh, this is from Zach C. He says, uh, I have a lazy question for Gordon. Could he n- <laughs> name a mid-range Nikon, which Gordon would call a Nikon, with a five-shot bracketing ability? I would rather keep my D70S and manually do a three-shot bracket, even though I may end up doing close to seven shots. Well, it's an impossible one to answer if all you want to buy is a body because they don't do one, a mid-range body with more than three frames, as I recall. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the D300S, I think, is the cheapest model in the range that offers more than three-frame bracketing. And obviously, that's that's getting on now. Hopefully, there'll be a D400 soon. Um, but in the meantime, a D300S, you know, because it's a few years old, you might get a great price on that. And it's, you know, it's a lovely camera. It's very tough. It's fast. You've got that's the deeper I, bracket like on it. Yeah. Um, I still love that camera. And when you pick it up, you think, wow, Nikon really nailed the ergonomics on that. And it was such an influential camera, I believe, for Canon when they did the 7D, is that a lot of a lot of the ergonomics of the 7D that make it feel so good. Yeah. And if you pick up a Nikon camera, you think, well, wait a minute, I think I've, I've kind of felt that, that style before. But it is infuriating how many manufacturers think that bracketing is a professional feature that will only that that demands a pro DSLR and a pro DSLR price. Why not put it into more affordable products? Um, I get this all the time. People saying, you know, why why don't they do it? There are some workarounds. Um, Scott Kublin uh, has got a neat one where on Canon where he uses the custom preset modes uh, on the mode dial to to kind of bracket one set and then bracket another. Although you are physically moving the camera a little bit, so there's a bit of risk there. Some people do some great remote controls which have got uh, bracketing features in them. Some of them control it via the, um, the USB. Uh, Eden Braxton, a photographer in Queenstown, was showing me one for his Canon. That was really neat. It was effectively duplicating what you get from the EOS utility on a laptop on a USB connection. So you, you can do it with that. Um, so there's lots of workarounds. If you want it built into a Nikon or Canon body, unfortunately, you're going to have to go for a higher-end one. And it's, I guess the more people that shout about it, you know, the better because other manufacturers are getting in on the act. I mean, I've shown this this camera on many hangouts we've traded before. This is the Panasonic GX1. It's a mirrorless ILC, uh, but it's a seven frame bracketing. Um, why can't everyone else do that? It's, you know, why, why, why reserve it? I think in a way, maybe they're saying that people shouldn't be doing HDR. And is that a bad thing? <laughs> Sinners. Yeah, maybe it's like HDR censorship. Well, let's end the show on that note. Um, (laughs) uh, Thank you guys very much for coming. Uh, I appreciate you all. And uh, thanks everyone in the chat room and everyone watching. Um, It was great. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. All right. Well, join us next week. Uh, Same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, we'll do it all again. Okay, bye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.